Hello folks, hope you're doing well. So we have a bit of a special video today where we're checking out the Toby Eye Tracker 5. Now this is something that's been on my radar for some period of time now and I was honoured when Toby reached out and offered to send one over for us to check out on the channel. It's also worth noting that Toby are running a massive 20% discount until January the 2nd, 2024. So be sure to check the sponsored link in the description. They're also running a sweepstake over this festive period where they have a Toby Eye Tracker 5 up for grabs along with several other prizes there'll be a separate link in the description for that of all the details and i would encourage you to go and take a look if you happen to be watching this video after january the 2nd 2024 don't worry all isn't lost you can still use the coupon code airnot at checkout to get a five percent discount now full disclosure this is a sponsored video and toby did provide me with this toby eye tracker 5 if you decide to make a purchase uh, using the links provided, I'll earn money from qualifying purchases. If you're in the market for a Toby Eye Tracker 5, and only if you are, using the links in the description really go a long way to supporting the channel and is massively appreciated. My thanks to Toby for sponsoring this video, and with that, let's check it out. So what does it do? Well, as the name suggests, it tracks your eyes, but not only your eyes, it also tracks your head movements and it blends the two together, which then us flight simmers can use for looking around the cockpits of our aircraft. Now, don't worry if you use glasses or if you're in low light conditions, Toby say this isn't an issue and rest assured I'll be able to put that to the test as I am a glasses wearer. And I do all of my simming from a windowless, dimly lit garden shed. Okay, so let's run through how we set it up. So here's my setup. Let me just pop the camera down, looking at the TV. Now, interestingly, I assumed that we'd be mounting the eye tracker to the top of the TV, but apparently not. The instructions say to mount it to the bottom. So we will take one of the two magnetic strips that Toby provide, here it is, and you can see on the back there's some peel and you peel that away which reveals some sticky tape. We will then stick the magnetic strip to the bottom of my TV. So there we go, there's the peel going off and we will now very, very carefully try and stick this as level as we can to the TV. They also provide a, an isopropyl alcohol wipe to give your screen bezel a little bit of a clean down to ensure a good contact with the TV and the magnetic strip. It's also worth noting that Toby provide a separate mounting system for curved displays, but I, uh, I, I don't have a curved display, so I can't demo that for you. Uh, sorry. Okay, back to the TV, and there we have it. Just a light bit of pressure. Obviously, I don't want to press too hard and risk cracking the TV screen. And now we can get our Toby eye tracker, and it should click into place magnetically. And there it is. Job done. Nice and easy. As for the software side of things, it was a piece of cake. Simply by plugging the device into USB, um, the Toby Experience app started downloading automatically from the Windows Store, which I thought was a really nice touch. And there's a couple of very quick initial calibration steps and you're done and you can hop into the SIM. Once you're in the SIM, you're gonna to wanna to head over to the controls option page, choose your main flying device. Now for me, that's gonna be the Thrustmaster Boeing yoke and I'll show you how I've got mine set up. In the camera menu, you'll see I've got toggle head tracking mapped to button number 12, which is a trigger on the back of my yoke on the right hand side. This simply allows us to turn the head tracking on and off. The other thing I've done is assigned button number one, which is the button on the left-hand side of the back of my yoke, uh, to eye tracking reset. Now this is really useful if you were to say uh, shuffle in your chair, for example, which then might make the eye tracking feel a little bit weird. This will recenter the head and eye tracking based on your new position, which is really handy. Finally, scroll along your various input devices and you'll find the Toby eye tracker, pop into the sensitivity menu and you'll see the eye versus head tracking ratio. Now. Because the Toby Eye Tracker 5 uses a blend of your head and your eye movements, this is how you can choose whether to prioritize the head tracker over the eye tracker or vice versa. If you scroll all the way to the right, you'll be prioritizing the head tracking. If you scroll all the way to the left, you'll be prioritizing the eye tracking. Everywhere in between is obviously a blend of the two. Personally, I found the out-of-the-box settings a little bit strong on the eye movement, so I tweaked it to 0.90, meaning the eyes have a little bit less of an impact on the camera movements. This was only a small tweak, but to me, it felt much, much better. All right, that is enough of the menus and the config. Let's jump into the plane. We're gonna take a little test flight, and I'll show you about another feature called Toby Ghost. Now, what Toby Ghost does is you have to download a, a separate application called Toby Ghost from Toby, and it allows me to put a overlay into OBS, which is my streaming software. So now if I turn it on in OBS, you should be able to see that there's a little bubble going around the screen that shows you what I'm looking at. So right now I'm looking at the PFD. Now I'm looking over at the uh, engine displays. 
now I'm looking straight ahead really nice stuff and what's important is that this can be operated completely independently from any head tracking so maybe you don't want the head tracking on but you'd like to have the bubble appear and um, that might be the case say if we're on final approach and I want you as the viewers to be able to see what I'm looking at but actually in that moment I didn't want the head tracking on for example it could be really handy okay so let's get ourselves taxi down we're going to taxi down to two three right and then we're going to do a little loop of the airfield come back in and we're going to give this a whirl okay so to turn on our head tracking I'm going to use my button on the back of my yoke so I'm going to click that now there we go head tracking is now enabled now I'm keeping my head completely still and all the movement that is taking place is from me moving my eyes my head is completely still and I think where the Toby High Tracker is going to excel is when we're on the taxiways especially imagine if you're flying on Vatsim on a busy airport and you need to quickly have a look out your window obviously I moved my head then to uh, get it to look all the way out the window but a combination of your head and your eyes I feel like that's almost uh, Toby's secret sauce as it were that combination that blend of the head movement and the eye movement is uh, is really something quite special I was quite taken back when I tried it for the first time earlier I didn't expect it to be as good as it was okay so we are holding short of two three right I don't have head tracking on at the moment just again to show you what to do to get it on if you want it on click the button you've assigned it is now on now if I look really far over here and then I decide to turn it off you notice how it kind of gracefully just goes back there's no weird snapping or anything and now we're back to our normal view um, and as you notice the Toby ghost is working so you can see the bubble moving around so you can see what I'm looking at so the two can work independently of each other which is really nice so let's get head tracking back on and let's go and get ourselves lined up oh look at that that is very very cool yeah this is going to really pay dividends on the taxiways especially on Batsim I can feel that much already all right, let's get ourselves lined up. And we're going to hold it on the brakes. 40% N1. Looking at the dials. Waiting for them to stabilise again. Not moving my head. Looking straight ahead. Didn't move my head at all then. That was all done with the eyes. Okay, keeping an eye on the speed. Now looking straight ahead. Okay, let's get ready to rotate. Away we go. Gear up. We're going to look out that window and see the world whizzing by. And also, of course, we can keep an eye on the first officer's PFD if we want to do a bit of uh, window gazing. So we're going to try and keep it at about 15 degrees. We've got autopilot lined up and ready to go. Let's get that on. Oh, I really feel like I'm a passenger. I really do. This is so much more immersive. You can see the bit of the engine there, look. And again, this isn't moving my head. I mean, I'm moving my head. A, I move my head a tiny little bit then to look at the uh, the engine. But this is all done just by moving your eyes around, and it feels nice. It, it this could so easily feel awful. It's like the devil's in the detail. I really feel like Toby's secret sauce is that combination of the head and the eye movement. If it was just the head, it would be good. But you know, fair enough. And if it was just the eye, it'd be good. But the two together. The, uh, the total becomes far greater than the sum of the parts. And of course you can all see what we're doing as well. You get to see where I'm looking, you get to see what's going on, you kind of get a better idea of what I'm doing. And you could say, well okay, fair enough, he's a content creator, why do I need the, uh, the, the little bubble thing to to float around? What use is that to me as someone that doesn't stream, doesn't make YouTube videos? Well actually 
the more I talk to people about flight sim in, in the chats in our live streams and other such places sooner or later the subject of your landing quality becomes a thing and actually what you could do you could start recording your landings in OBS overlay the little bubble and you can start to see when you watch your replays back you can start to see where you're looking at various different times maybe what you should have been looking at instead and you could really start to improve your landings so I think it has utility even if you're not a content creator I really do alright I need to stop looking out the window and think about landing this plane so I'm gonna turn us around get us on approach and then we'll catch up in a few minutes alright folks here we are on final approach into Manchester head tracking is off and that is just to really show you that you don't have to have it on all the time if you want it off turn it off if you want it on turn it on you've got the toggle button here it's the choice is yours but you can hopefully see the little bubble showing you where I am looking which is really nice so now I'm looking at the PFD looking at the ND looking up at the speed on the dials there and now we're looking straight ahead at the runway so let's turn on the head tracking as well there we go that's pretty good looking there at the uh the N1 dials. Let's lose the autopilot. And let's lose the auto throttle. Let's see if we can land this thing. There we go. Three reds is pretty good in flight sim. Given how busted the pappies are. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. There we have it. Straight down. And we've got reverses. Speed is coming down. Manual brakes. Let's lose those auto brakes and hop off here. Now this is where the head tracking I feel really comes into its own and the eye tracking for that matter. Just follow these uh, taxi lines. Not going to notice it too much there on that high speed exit but this tighter turn sort of get a view out of the windows here get a bit more of a a better sense of where we should be going because when you don't have the head tracking on and you're looking straight ahead it's often hard to work out where these lines are going until it's a little bit too late and again I think that simmers this is going to be particularly useful for because again you've got to be looking around all the time looking out your windows trying to see where traffic is basically trying not to cause a problem which is my <laughs> my main objective on Vatsim at the moment it's still early days for me but I think this could be a very 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 useful tool indeed the levels of immersion that it gave while we were looking out the window there I think was yeah that was quite quite striking so let's go and find ourselves a gate and we will call this test flight complete Okay, so just pulling into our gate now, and uh, yeah, the more I think about it, I think the, the secret source with the Toby Eye Tracker is the fact it does the head tracking and the eye tracking, and it kind of mixes the two together, and it's really, really nice how they've done it. Um, I don't know what that Southwest jet is doing in Manchester, but the less questions asked about that, the better. <laughs> but let's just go and find ourselves a gate now. And again, just being able to look around at this phase in the flight on the ground, it's really, really nice. And again, I should mention that I'm in a, a garden shed that I do my flight simming in. Really, really low light conditions in here. I've got two of those cheap, nasty streamer lights that plug into USB and a little rope light that goes around the perimeter of my desk. So very low light conditions. I wear glasses, so all the things that Toby said, it works in low light. It doesn't matter if you've got glasses. Yeah, they held up. Let's turn the head tracking off now, just uh, while we 
have a little chat. And uh, the other thing to talk about is the fact that I'm actually on a 43-inch TV. Now, again, Toby said that the eye tracking works on displays up to 30 inches. I suspect, I suspect they're being a, a little bit conservative there, which is fair enough. You kind of have to be when you're in their position. However, like I say, I'm on a 43-inch TV. It's fine, but I am quite a long way away from it. The uh, the Boeing yoke here is absolutely enormous. It really pushes me back quite far from the desk um, because of how much it sticks out to replicate that kind of pendular motion um, on the yoke. And, uh, yeah, so as a result, I am quite far away from the TV. I'm probably about a metre. My head is probably a metre away from the TV, maybe slightly more. It seems to work fine. So... Uh, take that for what it's worth let me know in the comments if you already have one of these how you're finding it what your um what your settings are what you find you use it for the most i'd love to hear from you and let me know if you've got any other questions about the device um, if you want to learn more there is a sponsor link in the description again thank you so much again to toby for sending this one out for us to check out together it's uh yeah it's been really great fun and i hope you've all enjoyed the video until next time take the very best care of yourselves and as always happy flying